I'm reading today from Path to Happiness, and we're studying the questing principle. This is the fifth keyword in the seven word system, please. And it starts with vision, and then it comes to intention. And this is the, the keyword that we're studying today, intention. Wishing and wanting are different. We wish upon a falling star. We make a wish before blowing out birthday candles. And we even wish that we could change things that have already occurred. Wishing is fanciful. Wanting has an entirely different body state, a different focus of the mind, and different expectations of outcome. When we are truly convinced that we want something, then we are much more likely to set about getting it. Intention goes even further. It means that we have indeed decided to allocate sufficient time and resources and will exert effort tenaciously until we succeed. It is a commitment to realize our vision. Linguistic roots are suggestive of tendons and points to straining and stretching towards fulfillment of a purpose. Intention, tendons. Whereas decision frees us to move on and vision shows what we imagine is a better situation, intention indicates that we are ready and willing to push ourselves beyond previous limits to reach out and make our claim. In life, some of what we need or enjoy simply comes to us without effort, other things we must attract consciously. This shows how the power of yin operates, we want and hope. But intention is yang. We claim and overcome. If necessary, we will struggle, we will persuade, we will cajole, we may even clash, but we will not depend upon or expect luck or favours. By our clear focus and impressive will, against the odds and until the job's done, to the exclusion of other matters, we intend to succeed. Until it becomes clear and compelling, a vision moves through various chapters in its story. Perhaps we see a fictional charity, character whose character Perhaps we see a fictional character whose qualities we admire, or a place, or an occupation. Perhaps we meet a person who has successfully created their lives the way we would like ours to be. Or perhaps we have nursed a dream since early childhood. Our ideas about what might occur for us are also shaped by commentary from parents and others. This visioning procedure is vague and extenuated over time, even to the extent that we may not know how to answer honestly if asked what we hope the future holds for us. Yet all this changes in the instant that intention occurs. It must. Intention must know its goal. So in one sense, intention is the crystallization of vision. This proves to be the more challenging aspect for many. They can achieve so much as long as they know what is required but lack the punch to crystallize their own vision into intention. So they end up serving the ambition of another. Whom should we serve? We can happily serve our own inspired vision, or even that of another person. Or, lacking a spiritual dimension, we might even need to call our hopes not vision, but ambition, and serve that instead, probably having our success measured by money and titles. To serve the ambition of another person, though, this is poor substitute and rather soul-destroying. We shouldn't have to work just for the money. If we trust, then money will come to us when we are doing what we are enthusiastically moved to do. Following this instant, when our own intention has been recognized as the master of what is to come, different behaviors become apparent. This master can be rather pushy, is always on the case and quick to seize opportunity. It becomes more serious with an announcement when our intention is made known. Firstly, we are likely to tell our partner. If not, then why not? And afterwards, our committed path is revealed to a wider circle than even the public. After this, we realize that we are truly engaged. We have chosen to invest our freedom in this way. Perhaps aspects of life must now change. We will talk to different people go to other places and generally rework life patterns so that they support our new direction. Probably we will need a budget, too. 
In every moment there is an uncommitted energy, an infinite range of opportunity that responds to whatever forces are momentarily active. If you ask someone, will you please do this for me, there is a real chance that they will. If you do not ask, then the chances are much less, probably in fact close to no chance at all. Your question acts upon their uncommitted energy and triggers an outcome one that furthers your dream of what you want to take place. This way of being is very opportunistic and assertive. The affirmation we live by is that each scenario, each moment and each person is an aspect of the means of manifestation. We notice that the application of vision is moment by moment, notwithstanding the existence of a bigger overall conceptual statement of intention. The more detailed is the plan, the easier it is to make small things serve the big thing. In other words, if we really know exactly what we want, then we have no ambiguity in making all the little choices and requests that will bring accomplishment. Those who are like this as a way of being tend to stand out. They are by no means always popular. They tend to leave the rest behind in the shadows, feeling envious or inadequate. Successful businessmen, executives, politicians, sportswomen, performers and top musicians are all examples. Anyone who gets to the top or even near the top has learned how to remove clear vision into intention. Yet there are plenty of others, whoever is reliably able to convert a problem into a solution, really. It is experienced early on in school examinations, which test us as much for our power of intention as our knowledge. We do so much to secure our lives. We have family protocols, insurance policies savings and we lock doors and keep guard dogs. Some even believe that owning a gun makes them safer. Perhaps some of this helps, but really it does seem rather fear-based, doesn't it? The most powerful tool we have, that which protects us more often and more effectively than a Rottweiler, is the mind. If we can shape the mind, train it to be obedient to the will, then none of these security practices and devices are required. There is extraordinary power in the focused mind. Let's try a visualization. Every cell of the physical body lines up north and south like iron filings responding to a magnet. Every feeling and every thought is entirely excluded from consciousness except one intention. And we stoke up our passionate enthusiasm, absolutely convinced that we have the power and the right to achieve our clear purpose. Imagine this concentrated into the smallest point in the third eye, then projected into the world as a laser beam. It is this that projects a story of our vision into the world of form. Now, part of our relationship with intention is to know that we have the strength and almost the permission to move in the direction we choose. Well, this idea of divine strength, Yaziz, is present here. Yazim, the knowledge that God is amazing. They come together in this practice, Yazim, Yaziz, Yazim, I see the glory of God in you, Yaziz and you're strong, and I'm strong, and together we're strong. It's that sense of glorification. What I am, what you are, what we are together, what God is, is amazing. <laughs> ya Azim, Ya Aziz, Ya Azim, Ya Aziz. Yazim, Yaziz, Yazim, Yaziz, Yazim, Yaziz. I mean, 